Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to present uh, the work. So this is the title. So the, so the, the, the purpose of the talk is to uh, investigate the relationship between optimality conditions and the finite convergence of the hierarchy. So, so we consider this general polynomial optimization. So here everything is a polynomial. So minimize f, a polynomial function. And uh, with equa uh, equality constraints and uh, inequality constraints. So this one is polynomial. So poly uh, everything is a polynomial. So we, uh, the a typical method to for this is uh, the size hierarchy. So this is a sequence of nested uh, semi definite relax relaxations for solving the problem globally. So we, well, we want uh, to compute the low bounds of a minimum, and also actually we want the global minimizers. So actually for this one, there are two questions that are related to this. The first one is, uh, well, this is uh, for polynomial optimization, we saw, the, we, saw, we saw for the global minimum and global minimizers. But actually, uh, you can see, in the, if we consider this as a nonlinear optimization, so you know we have the class work, for example, the optimality conditions. So you can see, so local and the global uh, pro problem, so is there any relationship between them? So actually, the, actually the, 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 this is the main purpose of the talk. So second one is the size hierarchy. So the size hierarchy actually is, uh, actually is very efficient. So only for general problems, you know, a few, a few steps, we can, we can get the, the global minimum very, very quickly. So, but however, theoretically, so in the earlier one, we only know, uh, the, uh, we only know the asymptotic convergence. So, but actually, the, the practical performance is better than that. So, only why we, we, are, we, we, we want to know why that is the case. So, actually, in the talk, we are, we are going to talk, uh, talk about it. So, actually, the, that one, the talk has three parts. So, the first one is a review of the classical local optimality condition. The second one is about the global optimality conditions. And the third one is, uh, is the consequence of these previous two. So we, so well, let's say was, uh, no, these are standard as uh, the first order optimality condition. So you know if we the constraint qualification holds as the as the minimizer, so so that means these gradients are linearly independent. Then we know the the, the first order condition holds. Well, there is also as a uh, complementarity condition. So for inequalities, we the we, there are uh, Lagrange multipliers, and the product is always equal to zero. But and the the the, the, the signs are non-negative. So, so here is a, we well, you know the, the, so you know, mu, you know mu one plus g one mu is greater than or equal to zero. But how if, if the summation is strictly positive, then we say it's a strict complementarity. So, so it's a the complementarity condition, then it's a second order necessary condition. Now suppose lambda and mu, g, uh, mu, mu j are the Lagrangian multipliers, so then we can get the Lagrangian function. So, uh, the, uh, the second order condition is suppose u is a minimizer, then you know the, well, so the Hessian of the Lagrange fun Lagrangian function is not a positive semi-definite. However, it is only it is positive semi-definite in the tangent space of the gradients. So, yeah, so, so it's a standard one. So, so the, uh, this is a second order necessary condition of, of uh, well, similar that we have second order sufficiency condition. So, so this requires the well, the Hessian of the Lagrangian is positive definite in the, the tangent space. So. Even yeah, these conditions are standard ones in the nonlinear programming theory. So let me summarize, uh, summarize it uh, quickly. So I can see the so suppose u is a no, uh, is a local minimizer, then we can the necessary conditions. So on the uh, constraint qualification, and uh, the, if uh, if a point is a local minimizer, then three condition holds a first order optimality, so the KKD condition, and that was uh, complementarity and the second order necessary condition. And all the sufficiency one is uh, is, is, is the stronger version of this. So we assume the KKD condition. Assume the strict complementarity, and the second order sufficiency condition. Then we can prove. So if these uh, if three conditions are satisfied, then we prove a, a, point, a, a point must be a strict local minimizer. So now this is um, so actually well, as you can see here. Uh, uh, so you can see you know there, there is the gap here. You know there is uh, the gap is uh, complementarity versus strict complementarity. And the second order necessary condition, and the second order sufficient condition. Then you see there is a there is a gap. But how, how often does this happen? You know, so you can see, you, you know, this one is stronger than this. And how, how, how often does this happen? So, yeah, actually, here's the result. So, the result is that in the genetic case, all those sufficient conditions are satisfied. So, here's the result. Now, so for polynomial optimization, so we know what is the input? 
the input is not x, is a the input is a, is a vector of the coefficients of all the polynomials. Right? So if we consider the coefficients as the input, then, the, then we have these results, and there exist phi 1 to phi l. So these are all polynomials. The polynomials in the coefficients of the input of the input data. So if this, so the result is, is this. If these polynomials do not uh, do not vanish, then these three, three standard conditions hold at every local minimizer. So this constant quantification and strict complementarity and second order sufficiency condition holds. So in other words, but you can see these are the inequalities. So you can see it defines uh, what is open open dense set. So in other words, suppose the input the coefficients of the polynomial are generic, then these are satisfied. Then these uh, these conditions are very hold. So actually, this also consistent with our observa uh, the observation. So in well, when we do in uh, the, the examples of nonlinear problems. So if the if the problem is not specially created, then you can see all the, all the sufficient conditions are satisfied. So I shall just explain that. Okay. So now let's talk about the global optimality conditions. So what I'll talk about is actually is by definition. So a point well the key here k is a is a feasible set. So a point U is a global minimizer, what is by definition. So the fx minus f u is non-negative. For every feasible point, right? So the definition is this has nothing. But how are we play a trick in the epsilon language? So this one is the same as if this subtraction plus epsilon is positive for every x that belongs to k. So that means for every feasible x, this minus uh, this subtraction plus epsilon is positive. Well, you know, this is a small trick, but it, tells, it does not really tell us anything new. But however, in the in the representation of polynomials, this makes a difference. So so here's the result. So actually it was so so okay, the, the a sufficient uh, op, uh, global optimality condition. So now, what well, make it easier? Suppose we have only one equation and one inequality. Make it easier for okay. Now we consider minimize f subject to h equals zero g is non-negative. So you can see. So you can, we we, we so, so okay, what what is sufficient condition? So u is a global minimizer if this is true. So what does this mean? So, well, f x is objective. And u is a minimizer. So just a value is a number. So f x minus u is a polynomial in x. <laughs> now. This one, if it, or this uh, assumption, so if this subtraction has this representation, now what, is it, what does this mean? So is phi is a polynomial. H bar is a constant here, and plus sigma 0, plus sigma 1 times g. Sigma 0, sigma 1, they are sum of squares. Sum of squares means they are sum of squares of polynomials. So you can see, well, this one we are to, uh, we are to ask that uh, uh, if this one is used, then you must be a global minimizer. Why? Well, you can see this way. So suppose you choose a feasible point x. Say, if x is feasible, that means h equals 0. So this one equals 0. And gx is non-active, so this one is non-active. And sigma 0, sigma 1, they are sum of squares. So when we evaluate at the feasible point, this one is non-active, non-active. Everything is, so this is 0 plus non-negative plus non-negative. So you can see what's going on. So you can see, for any feasible x, the right-hand side is non-active. So in other words, but this one is, well, this equation, this equation means is identity. Identity means this polynomial is identically equal to this polynomial. So, so if this one is true, then we can see that fx minus fu is non-negative for every feasible x. So this one, so if this is true, so we know so it's a certificate. You must be a global minimizer. But now the question is how often or how likely is this true? So actually, there is a there is a result. So is a yeah, we have the problem. So suppose we have one equation and uh, one inequality. So okay, the result. So if you i of edge, what is i of edge? So every polynomial generates an idea. So we assume the idea is real. What it means real? It means that it's not repeated. I mean, simply no repeated real rules. So no. And then this one is a comedian. Well, this is an edge break definition. Well, what what means the mean? The true mean is that it means that the feasible side is compact. So, that, so anyway. So under this assumption, so that means if, if these three classical conditions, so use a C, so C, Q, C, S, C, C, so I mean, there is a constant qualification and the strict complementarity and second order sufficiency condition. So if these three classical conditions hold at every global minimizer, then the global optimality condition holds. So that means the earlier certificate will be satisfied. So this means that if the if it is easy, I mean for I mean easy means sufficient condition. So if it is easy to certify local optimality, then it's also easier to certify global optimality. So this is the main consequence. So this means that the global optimality condition almost always holds. Why why is this true? Well, because these three conditions, these three sufficient conditions are genetically satisfied. So that means 
genetically, it's a global optimal condition is uh, is satisfied. But of course, there are exist counter examples. Anyway, so this is uh, the now okay. We finish two parts. So then let's talk about the, the cells. How, how much time do I have? I guess it's, is that five minutes. Okay. Now, what's the cell halo? Okay, well, cell that means is the sequence of uh, semi-definite relaxations. So we consider this problem, so minimize f. So, well, make it easy. I mean, for, um, suppose we have one equation and one inequality. So you can see, so what is, well, actually, there are several different uh, equivalent ways to de uh, do describe the Lasser's hierarchy. So uh, one similar uh, way is uh, this way. So, uh, so we find the law bounds using sum of squares representation. So that means we maximize gamma. So he is, such as f minus gamma belongs to this set. Now this set is, uh, I mean, you can consider as uh, in the in the global in, in the earlier global optimality certificate, we don't have we don't fix the degree bounds. By the way, here by young computation, we always have degree bounds. So we so if we fix the degree bounds, that means well, that is the truncation. I mean, by the way, it's finite dimensional. So this man, by the way, this is a convex set and it can be represented by uh, by a linear matrix inequality. So it's SDB actually. And then we can see for each k, then we get a lower bound. I mean, k increase. Well, when k increase, then this set is increasing. So we can get a sequence of lower bounds. So, so here's the definition. So let's say how we has a finite conversion if if at some stage the lower bound equals the minimum value. So if this is true, then we say it has finite convergence. So well, let's make a uh, same example. So this example, so everything is quadratic. So we can see what k equals one. We get the lower bound and negative three. So it's not tight. Now increase to two, so we get lower bound negative two. So this one equals the minimum value. So, and this one, so in this example, so it, it converts in two steps. Let's see one more. So this one, so k equals two, and we get negative seven. It's not tight. K equals three, or negative, you get negative six, but it's still not tight. How about increase k equals four? Then it's tight, and this one actually we get a minimizer. So it converts in four steps. So what was come actually well, when the cell proposed that his method actually proved the asymptotic convergence, that means uh, what we assume is Archimedean. What I mean, it means the feasible set is compact. So if the feasible set is compact, then it proves the, the law bounds will be asymptotic converge to the minimum value, the, the global minimum value. So it means this asymptotic convergence. Now the question is, well, actually, well, as I mentioned, well, this is only uh, the theoretical is the convergence is asymptotic, but how about in practice, the, it converges very quickly. So, so we, we want to know why, when does the finite convergence occur? So here is a, so it's, um, actually there is what, before the, actually in the earlier, the beginning there is a negative is that. So actually here is, there is what, if the dimension of this feasible set is three or higher, then there always exists a bad polynomial. So is that we have a symmetric convergence, but we never have finite convergence. But they exist, okay? It's not, it's, it's not a genetic, it's still exists, I mean it's a very special case. But however, if F is not specially chosen, for example, we generate random polynomial, then we, can, we almost always have, have, have finite convergence very quickly. Actually, we, uh, it's actually the cell has software, I mean, it's doing it very quickly. So, anyway, so why is this true, actually, here is, here is the result. So, under the Archimedean condition, that means the feasible set is compact. So, if these three, so if these three classical conditions hold at every global minimum, then we have finite convergence. So, this is the result. So, but, the, but these three conditions are genetically satisfied. So, that means genetically, the, the size hierarchy has a finite convergence. So, okay. For genetic case, the size hierarchy has a finite convergence. But as you can see, well, in our life, nothing is genetic, right? everything is special. So, in our life, what, what should happen? Well, actually, I'd, I'd like to advertise my, the other work of mine. So, it's a Jacobian STB relaxation. Well, it means use them, well, it's a more complicated relaxation, but it's still STB. So, if we apply this, then we always have finite convergence. But here is a part of here, we knew that uh, you only need to make some assumptions about the feasible set. But object, there is no assumption about the objective. Then this one is always has finite convergence. So, I think.